During the soft days of latter spring, when the dawn hills are veiled in mist, and the wetlands have finally emerged from the long winter's sleep, nature springs to life with symphonies of birdsong, and every shade of green, every shape of water, and every hue of blossom. For a forager, there is so much abundance in healthy forests that it can be overwhelming. Here, playing in swimming sunlight, are the delicate incipient blossoms of Canada Mayflower, soon to turn into clear as ruby berries that taste like cranberries. And in the chill of the hardwood forest, one might yet find oyster mushrooms, morals, and other early season delectables. But my favorite place to forage is along the banks of little rivers and brooks, the riparian areas that are so fecund, for these are the places to find any number of delicacies, ostrich ferns, bullets, and lexinums. And at this time, one of my favorites, a fair-sized and spicy herb known as wintercress. Wintercress is a kind of wild mustard in the Brassica family. In the world, there are tens of thousands of plants in the Brassica family, and you may think of them all, varied though they may be, as wild mustards. They can look incredibly different, but I guarantee you that you know many of them. They include Brussels sprouts, kale, turnips, radishes, watercress, and many, many more. From the foraging perspective, the mustard family is one of the most important to become familiar with. Though they can look so different, they all share a common feature, a unique blossom that we will examine later. And when you learn to identify this blossom, you can identify any plant in the mustard family. And that opens the doors to literally tens of thousands of forageables, because every type of mustard plant is edible. Which is not to say that you'll find them all to be flavorful, but if you don't like one, there are many more to try. Wintercress favors moist ground. You'll find it in the same place as plants like this tart edible dot grow. And striped maple with its tasty early season blossom clusters also favors such ground. As well as blue bead lily, which when it first rises, presents tender deep green leaves that taste just like cucumber. Such plants like sweet, well-drained soil. And this is the kind of ground that wintercress favors though it'll tolerate just as well the damp, boggy, silty grounds of vernal ponds. The fact is, as long as the ground is moist, wintercress is not particular where it grows. I have found it growing in the sandy soils amidst pines and hemlocks, in well-drained soils, and in places like this, muddy, silty ground, where it is more than happy to grow right out of the middle of the little streamlet. It does not like the shade of deep forest canopy, Though if it can get a bit of sun, it will happily tolerate any little forest break. Here it is growing along the banks of a forest brook and making do with the small bit of sun that the tall trees afford it by simply growing to either side of the brook. Wintercress can quickly grow to become a large, bushy plant and by mid-June can reach two to three feet tall. The one shown here is an exceptionally large specimen. The plant will grow a thicket of stems emerging from a single point and leaves will begin growing near the very base of the stems. As the stems grow, they develop branches that spiral up the plant at roughly 120 degrees to each other. The stems themselves are thick and robust till near the very top. Leaves grow beneath each branch, emerging on the same side as the branch, and flower clusters emerge at the ends of the branches. Its upper leaves grow into a shape like a triangular spade with broad teeth that are at first pointed in a dentate pattern but may become rounded in a crenate pattern. But the leaves at the base of the stem have smoother leaf margins. The leaves themselves are sessile, they have no stalk, and they partially clasp the stem as illustrated here. The spherical clusters at the ends of the branches hold numerous buds which bloom into flowers in no particular order so that the blooming looks a bit haphazard, yet beautiful in its chaos. The leaves are dark green and glossy, and higher up on the stem, where they do not emerge below branches, they grow into a deeply veined, elongated form, with a long telltale blade to either side of the primary leaf, roughly opposite one another. The stem itself is as green as the leaves, and also ribbed and hairless. All brassica, or plants in the mustard family, share a trait that makes them uniquely easy to identify once they come into bloom. Their flowers, no matter how large or small, have a distinct growth pattern that is unique to the mustard plants. And though there are tens of thousands of mustard species in the world, if you learn to identify this pattern, you will know you have found a mustard plant. And if you have found a mustard plant, you have found something that's edible. That's not exactly to say it's good to eat, but it may well be worth giving it a try. 
Sometimes the flowers can be fairly large and sometimes so tiny that you can only observe them through a loop. Wintercress flowers are quite small, but you don't need a loop to observe them. They are about half an inch across and easily distinguished as mustard flowers. Here's how to tell. All mustard flowers have four petals, and those petals grow in an X form, not at 90 degrees to one another, but rather two petals on one side will be relatively close to one another, and the two petals on the opposite side will also be close to one another, much like you would write an X. And within every mustard blossom are six stamen. These are the male parts of a flower. It's easy to remember that they're male. They stay men. There will be four that are taller and toward the middle of the flower in roughly a square. And they're pointed out by the four arrows in this photo. Do note that their roughly square formation can vary considerably. But they will always be toward the center of the flower. And they will always be longer than the two stamens on either side, illustrated by these arrows. The stamens on the side will be considerably shorter than the stamens in the middle. And the short stamens will always be at each junction of the wide part of the X formation of the petals. Anytime you find a plant with its flower in this form, no matter how large or small, you have found a brassica, a plant in the mustard family. You can know that it's non-toxic and may well be good for foraging. I have found very tiny plants growing near my cottage with almost microscopic flowers that I was able to identify for certain as mustards using a 10 power loop. And they have a very mustardy, spicy flavor and add zest to salads and any dish I add them to. And I found other forms of wild mustard growing through these woods that were not so good. But I have found if you experiment, all wild mustards have some kind of use. Even the ones whose leaves or stems come across as too spicy, bland, or bitter to make use of often have tasty flowers, or if you wait a while and then try the seed pods or the seeds themselves, you may discover an excellent spice. This particular wintercress is also known as yellow rocket, scientifically as Barbaria vulgaris. It has a biennial growth pattern. In its first year, it grows as a basal rosette, as shown in this photo. The rosette leaves are stalked and in a liar pinnatifid form. Find this rosette, and the following year, you'll get the wintercress as we have described it so far. As the plant matures, it will form little seed pods as much as an inch and a half long. Harvested young, they have a zesty flavor and add zip to dishes. I find foragers often don't make enough use of their noses, and it's a good idea to get used to doing so. And if you crush a bit of wintercress in your hand, you'll find it has a pleasant, mildly mustard fragrance with a little bit of vegetal green. As to taste, the leaves themselves are slightly bitter and mustardy with their young and tender. And when the plant is very young, say around a foot tall, it can be used in entirety, raw in salads or as a pot herb. Though to be quite honest, my favorite part of this plant is the flowers, which are abundant. They have a zesty, mustardy flavor and go well in soups and stews and add bright color and interesting taste to salads. Wintercress is an abundant plant that commonly grows throughout healthy woodlands, anywhere you can find moist ground and forest breaks that allow it sunlight. It will also grow in open areas as long as there are some trees about to provide shade. Wintercress is not endangered and you can use it freely. Thank you for watching. The Naturalist program is committed to the reliable coverage of all matter of topics relating to natural science, from ecology and conservation to the nature of the universe beyond our Earth, and making that information practical with solid advice on living well with the natural world. If you appreciate the program, please take a moment to subscribe. Subscribing costs nothing and never will, but it sure helps a lot.